Ara Avedikian, on behalf of Apple Art Incorporated, successfully put together an unprecedented high-end exhibition of famous French-Armenian artists Jean Sem and Carsus' selected works. The opening ceremony on December 6, 2022, brought together artists, community leaders, art lovers. The audience was mesmerized and blown away. The layout and design, the artsy and warm atmosphere, helped the visitors to focus on the unique content of the exhibition. We were honored with the presence of Jeanne Jansem, who arrived from Paris. Jeanne, welcome to Los Angeles. Thank you. We're very happy to have you here. This is an unprecedented event, an exhibition that is very unique. So congratulations. Well, thank you for inviting me. And, uh, also, it's a surprise because uh, such a collection, uh, I didn't know that it uh, belonged to one person. one person. So what is interesting for me is uh, uh, the taste of this person. Because uh, sometimes you see collections coming from someone here, someone there, and there is no uh, homogeneity. So, but now I can it's fun for me because it's, uh, it's almost a travel in my father's life. I know that uh, uh, many Hollywood uh, celebrities collected your father's work. Yes, that's And one true. of them uh, was Yul Brynner. Yes. And very, also very, Anthony Quinn. Very close friends. For Quinn it was different. Uh, they were a, a little bit rival, rival. Uh, but uh, Yul was a very dear friend. And I remember him very well. I remember from the documentary, your sister says that every time he would visit your father, he would get another uh, artwork, another piece. Not only, and uh, he was visiting all the exhibition, even when he had the movie done in Spain, I remember he asked on the contract for the producer that uh, he has to go to, to Paris. So now he was a very dear and close friend. Really. Loyal, very loyal. Also. Oh yeah. And I have uh, an anecdote about him. Uh, he played the king and I for decades. For decades, exactly. And uh, at the end of his life, unfortunately, um, we went to London with my father to, uh, to say hello, because we, we know the, uh, the show very well. And uh, I was uh, with my camera, and uh, uh, he was uh, preparing his makeup. And he said, you see, when I was young, to look a king of 60 years old, I need hours. Now in 10 minutes, it's done. Amazing, so. his sense of humor. And uh, also, if you can just uh, share with us uh, something so, so dear to your heart when it comes to your father. I, I'm sure it's a lot. It's all your life, technically. But uh, what would you like to share with our viewers? I have something which I wish is interesting to hear. Obviously, jean Sem is very famous for his uh, uh, handwriting, drawings. He, I know he has the reputation to be uh, one of the most good uh, uh, artists drawing, okay? And um, it's obvious, all the images of Jean Sem are obvious. Women, markets, ballerinas, landca landscapes, everything is easy to read. But there is something that people, the public, the collectors, they don't see at once. And it was very important for my father, because he was always speaking about that, is that the, the image itself is not important. What is important to do a good piece of art is the distribution of the spots, of the colors, of the rhythm, of the colors. And after that, the image is coming. So when I see the Jean Sem, even when I, I give a hand for the display, uh, I'm not going by the subject, I'm not going by the images, I'm going by, by the rhythm of the music of the painting. And uh, I remember when my father was uh, speaking about that, uh, the collectors were like surprised because they don't see and they don't understand. You have to feel the music. Yes, but it's, he, he used to say that all the abstract art is included in the figurative art. And with Jean Sem, it is obvious. 
Because if you have the opportunity to withdraw just the black lines, the paintings are abstract, abstract, absolutely abstract. And it, uh, it's also funny to, uh, to point something that you can see the painting upside down and it's still a good one. The, uh, so this is a, a something not hidden, but something that it's not obvious for the visitors. The painting with the naked girls in the studio here. Right, right? Uh -huh. the one with the, one, uh, the, okay. the oil and okay. on canvas, right? Uh, yes, it's oil yeah. on canvas, uh -huh. and the other one, and uh, which is, uh, I think it's a uh, harvest or something. If you just uh, try to forget the drawing, it's just spot of colors, you see? Mm -hmm. and, and come with me now, for example, you see? Okay, it's naked young girl, it's a chimney, but it's blackier, 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 blackier. It's just a wreath, and this is empty, but it's not empty. So it's the same on all the paintings. And if you uh, try to understand what it means, you can see that this one is very close that from that one, even if the period is so different. Even if uh, this one is colored, this one is a painting, this one is, is just Indian ink, and uh, it's uh, another period, but but For the signature, me, signature is the same. Obviously. The handwriting. Handwriting, yes. Yeah, the handwriting is the same. And this is why I think that Jean Sem is important because we don't speak about money or fame or whatever. But what I heard very, very, very often is when a Jean Sem is in a room, you can see it's a Jean Sem. So this is a, a very good uh, point for future and uh, and uh, because the style is classic, the subjects are, let's say, after war, well, I mean, humanist, poor people. Uh, my father used to say, it's funny, in my studio, nothing is new. Even when I buy a vase, it's broken. It's broken. But he was uh, very much uh, touched by uh, the work of time on anything and on people. Uh, Jeanne, you're not just a collector, you're Jean Sem's son. To be son of an artist, Jean Sem or another artist, is a very special life. It's a gift. Uh, some artists, uh, some children of artists, they think it's, a, it's a heavy to be uh, a child of an artist. For me, it's really not heavy. It's, it's really... A, amazing the kind of life I had to live when I was a kid, but I couldn't know that it will bring me here. But you are different. You, the, the father is different, this man is different, even the mother is different, because it's always very, very sensitive. Always. Every, everything is sensitive. If you don't have salt on the table, it can be a volcano. You know, so <clears throat> it's like I make a comparison. It's like the fisherman's son. He may smell fish, but he doesn't but know. So I was uh, in uh, ambience in a milieu which was very special, still very special. But I've never noticed that. But today, it has you been appreciated today I, I more than it. ever. Yes, and it's uh, it's a wealth because uh, it's freedom, the way we think, it's, uh, it's sharing things. It's a lot of qualities uh, and it's, uh, it's uh, uh, you can go into the heart of people. It's, it's crazy. It is. It's an honor because your father gave you a gift that cannot be bought. That's right. That's right. It's a, it's a wealth which I carry uh, in me, and nobody can uh, steal it from me. No, it's a, it's, it's in it's your right. blood. It's oh, in your yeah. DNA. Very much, very much, and uh, uh, even the uh, Armenian DNA is uh, is so strong. I mean, it's a, but you know, it's not easy for me to explain something which is an evidence, which it has always been like this. So 
I can answer some question, but I'm not so. Uh, um, what can I say? I'm. I can't explain things. It's. Uh, it is what it is. It's the way it is. We have been grown up like this. Yeah, words. Words are not enough sometimes, and uh, like you said, everything is obvious. For me, yes, but I know that it's not obvious for everybody. So I, I am the go-between to explain a few things if they. I will be ready for these three days to uh, answer all the questions. Uh, of course, I can see many periods, many things different. I know a lot of uh, models. I know this, this one, for example, was a, a very dear friend of my sister. Her name is Marianne Tor Toromachia. I, I, <clears throat> this was 1971. I drove my father to Spain. So this is very specific. Uh, memories for me. Your dad had the keys to the Paris Opera House. A dancer, a man. He was a star at the opera. He was a friend of friends. And uh, he is he, still very, very pleasant man, very sympathetic. And uh, he became friendly with my father. My father said, what do you do? He said, I'm the dancer. Oh, a dancer. So he said, come and see me. And we have seen our father from the everyday life, going to the opera, and he came back like crazy. Crazy. He was dancing, dancing in his he was own studio. showing us what the ballerina was doing, jumping in the, in the, in the house. We, it was fun, and in the same time, said, wait, what's going on? So all of a sudden, he discovered this very specific ambience, he went to the opera, he, he did hundreds of sketches, and he started to do these amazing paintings from 1968. And the success came at once. Uh, in France, in the United States, he had commission from the Arknes Ballet for a huge piece, five meters, and he did ballerinas, ballerinas, and he invited ballerinas in the studio to pose, not models, real ballerinas. This is why all the ballerinas are a success, because it's real. Oh, by the way, my father has never drawn or paint from imagination. He has to see something and then uh, he, even said, he even said no to Fidel Castro. Um, unless you come <laughs> yes. and sit in front of me, I'm not going to paint you. So ballerina it was at the highest point of his fame, and all of a sudden, after uh, I would say uh, six years, I think, something like this. Um, no, less than six years. 71. The early 70s. Yeah, yeah, early 70s. Stopped. He stopped. So all the galleries, the dealers said, Jean, what are you doing? You have to do this. He said, no. So finally, not at once, he explains why he gave up with ballerina. He said, I was so much used to do this and to do that, that I was uh, almost a traitor for the dance, the dancers, the ballerinas, because I was not having my inspiration from them anymore, but from my habit to do it. So he has been 100% honest, and he said, no, that's it. And then in 2000, he came back with ballerina. Interesting. And for us, which is, uh, maybe you, you will notice that, in the 60s, his uh, drawing is very sharp. In 2000, he's an old man. So he's starting to shake a little bit. It's not the same drawing, we can see that. It's not the same handwriting. And when I received, because I did the book on ballerinas on 2000, it was 2003 or 2004, uh, this is also another story, I have plenty of stories. And <clears throat> I was looking for 1968 pieces, genuine ballerina, and I found only three of them. So I bought cash, like a rush. I went back to the gallery, I put, because we were preparing the exhibition, I put the drawings, watercolors, Indian ink and watercolor, on the floor, I compare, and I say, 
oh, there's a difference. Now, of course, the difference was uh, obvious, but I said, oh, finally, this is, this is good. 1968, no problem. 1969, no problem. But 2000 is very good too. It's so different because the little difference of shaking brought more humanity in the model, in the ballerina. And again, it was not models, it was real ballerinas. And in fact, uh, it was very interesting to see how one subject had been treated, I mean, uh, almost 30 years before. And again, it's not a double subject, it's just same subject, but so different. A different approach. Yes, and it was very good, very, very good. And uh, uh, we used to work with a very famous gallery in South Africa, a long time ago. And then, because the father passed away, the, the, the dealer who organized these uh, exhibitions in South Africa passed away too. And all of a sudden, I was in my gallery, the Gallery Matignon, um, I saw a guy, sweatering, came with me like this, a large guy. We stared at each other and I said, Mark, he was the son of this dealer, he was 15 years old and I took care of him in Paris when the father was buying paintings, I was older than him. And, uh, so you recognized him? Each other. And it was like big friend, but I, I was older. So all of a sudden he says, but these are the, the new Jean Sam? I said, yes. Oh, oh, okay. So he said, uh, this one, that one, that one. And he went back and I said, what? He said, as usual. I said, but Mark, we haven't been working together for decades. Uh, you are not showing Jean Sam? He said, no, no, it's for me. Ah, okay, it's for you, so... For his own collection. For, we made the sale. The day after, he came back, very neat, with a lovely woman, his wife, and he said, I want one more because we are four. So he bought another one, big painting. Now, <laughs> he's going back to South Africa, and he sent us emails, because it was uh, the email period, and he said, Jenny, um, do you have more? I said, Mark, yes, I do, but uh, he said, no, no, I'm thinking, I'm going to do an exhibition. Okay, so we do an exhibition, to, it was 2006, so we went there. And I said, Mark, why have you decided? He said, because when the crate arrived in my gallery, I opened the crate to show to my uh, employees and we sold the paintings. So I said, oh, jean sam is still alive in South Africa. And we did a huge exhibition, fantastic. And I discovered that he had so many collectors in South Africa. I didn't know. I, I knew, because we have used to sell paintings there, but so many people, 15 paintings in one house, I mean, 14 paintings in another one. It, it was, it was a... It's unbelievable. No, and yes. we as Armenians, we take pride in uh, the success that John Sam ha had and has and will always have. Yes, because uh, as you know, a long time ago, uh, people, they had culture and they, they know how to, uh, uh, to behave. Now, everything is branded. Everything is marketing. Everything is uh, uh, Facebook or uh, Insta or uh, selfies and uh, uh, you have to wear a bear, you have to have uh, uh, white sneakers. You have. So now the public is, uh, is uh, I, I don't know the word in English, is uh, uh, um, oh, they don't have originality. They uh... that's right, a little bit. Um, they do what they are taught to do. Okay, no freedom. Standards. Standards. That's right. So, uh, 
each country needs their champions. Uh, France is a great country with a great history, but you, you will notice that some countries, which were, were small countries, became big countries, and they have invested in their own champs. But movie stars, or soccer player, or uh, whatever, and artists. And artists, obviously. For Armenia, what do we have? We have Aznavu, of course we have Jean-Sem, Carzou, but also France is not supporting the artist. French or Armenian or whatever. Doesn't so matter. No, they don't. So all these artists are international now, and I can understand that the Armenian are very proud of Jean Sem and they, they have to, and, and, and it's good for our heart. My father, at the end of his life, uh, I mean, discovered his Armenian roots strongly. At home, he was always eating Armenian, he was on Armenian television, he was on Armenian music. And he gifted his art to, to the, the museum? Genocide Museum. Yes, it's uh, 32 paintings. 32 paintings. Yes. But it was, uh, uh, it was amazing. I mean, we, when we went there, even Jean Sem himself, when we saw the, the display, he was like, <gasps> and I have a picture, a black and white picture of, of my father. He was like losing his balance. Ah, it was so strong, so strong. But he gifted uh, yes. from, his from the bottom of his heart. Anyway, it has, it has to be there. It was a... Uh, uh, it was uh, it was done for that. It's, uh, it's it's you know. Usually, someone who has been kicked out of his country, or even someone who is coming from the country to, to the town to the city, he still has, as we say, mud on the on the boots. For my father, it has been the contrary. He he was uh, not considered as an Armenian when he was a, a young artist, and he changed his name. For, uh, uh, because the name of Semergian is, for the French people, is very difficult to, 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 pronounce. to pronounce. I don't know why, but it's like this. Even for me at school, it was always a problem. And um, with his life, he went back to Armenia. But this generation, I must say so, I'm not the only one. He went back to his roots. Yes, but when we were kids, to speak about Armenia, it was almost forbidden, because it was a shame to have lost the country. And for all this generation, they were born in Armenia, I mean, in, in uh, Ottoman Empire. It was not a very good story, of course, not a good, very good memory, of course, and they don't... Uh, not something you would we, share proudly. Yes, and we haven't been grown up in our culture, because it was a terrible wound for this generation. And I am, with my sisters of course, we are a very rare people to have still our parents born in Armenia. Most of them we were born uh, in France and the generation the people we meet, they are uh, the second generation. We are the first one uh, born in France. But it's still, uh, uh, deep, I can't say difficult, but I don't have deep roots in France, but I don't have deep roots in Armenia either, which means that I'm, I am I uh, am comfortable everywhere. But do you have deep roots in our hearts? Oh, for sure. <laughs> for sure. The well, first time I went to uh, uh, Armenia, I cried. But then I said, why are you crying? It's not your land, it's not your stones, you, you, are, you have nothing, this part of the, of the country is not yours. And uh, when I went to Istanbul, because I've been to visit my uh, parents' village, I was like, oh, I understand why I love, I love this. And because they were born in Soleuse, and Soleuse is up on the hill with a lake and with uh, olive trees. I didn't know, really. I have never been to Seleuze first, so I, I... Now I tell you, I love lakes, I love mountains, and I love olives. I know why. I and know. we know why. 
thank you. Thank you for being here. No. And we're very happy no, to no, have I'm you in the city of Glendale because here yes. the community, the Armenian community is the largest, yes, actually. I heard that. Yeah. And so we're very... No, uh, no. I'm very much honored to, be, to have been invited. And... Uh, This is a very pure drawing and it's done by, with matches and in, Indian ink. But the matches were not sharpened. It was just genuine matches. And uh, when he wants to, for example, to do something like this with more ink, he was just doing the flat side of a match. And, when, and for the drawing itself, he was on the, on the edge of the on match. The edge. You see? And uh, the other important point is these are lithographs okay which called original lithographs why is it original it's because the as you know this is a print right okay? print with uh, as many uh, um, press of uh, colors. Numbered, you know numbered, yes yeah. but but it's a print print it's yeah. a print but it's original when the artist himself is doing the drawing on the zinc or on the stone. He, many artists, they just give a watercolor to a professional engraver. And the professional engraver is looking at the original watercolor and is making a copy on the stone or on the zinc. My father never, never, never. He has always done, this is why they are originals. And for etchings, it was the same thing. And Bernard Buffet, which I take care for first, also, is, uh, he was an original engraver. And this is why it's called original, original lithographs. Project. Now, why is it numbered? Because they print 100, for example, and uh, the, the price of a, of a print is the beauty of the subject, the quality of the artist, and is it rare or not? Jani, is, it, is this one of the old paintings? Yes, this is, uh, this is the old paintings and uh, you can uh, see the subject. Uh, this could be Spain, Spanish people, and uh, it's the end of the 50s. It started to be famous at the, about the, the end of the 50s. And uh, you can see the drawing. And at that period, he wanted to show that he was very good doing hands. And uh, this is one uh, very it's, specific it's, painting for that. It is that. beautiful. I, I do, because there are works on paper, mm -hmm. and uh, they are more, they are oil on paper, and they are more spontaneous than uh, paintings. So it is interesting to notice that this, this was in Portugal, market in Portugal, to notice that when he's doing this work, he's doing it quite fast. And 
you can see if you are not the nose on it that it's uh, very uh, very light very dynamic uh, almost abstract then when he goes from the sketch to the painting oil painting is different he's uh, he's not in the rush but what is very interesting is to see how someone who is capable to rush it's perfect even when he rush and it's also perfect when he spend time in the studio so this one he rushed this was this was done outside for sure for sure yes this one too this one too because this is a uh, um, this is a, a piece of shit of, uh, of a book. For advertising on Inside TV, please call 818-653-0199.